Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Java Service Provider Interface or SPI which was introduced in Java 6 so this is a feature that has been in Java for quite a while and it's not that complicated but you can build something very powerful with it and you need to know that it's a part of Java because some of the built-in libraries in Java can be extended using SPI. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's jump into some code. So here we have the editor and I have created a service. And this service is usually an abstract class. You can have a, sing uh, a class that actually has some kind of an implementation, that's fine. But in this case, I'm using an abstract class. And this class is very simple. It's a message service. Uh, this message service can say something to the user and it also has a type. And in these cases, I have uh, created two types. So a greeting type and a chat type. And this is not something that is, uh, that you have a specific type is not something that you need to build into your service. You can have services without types. You can distinguish between them with other data. But I thought that that was an easy way to say, okay, this is a service of this kind of a type, and then I have this service type. So we will look into that later in the actual usage of this. Uh, we can jump out of the program and look at that first. So we have this user service, and here I can take a service loader and say that I want to load a message service with a class and then I will get a list of message services. So all the message services that could be loaded into the system. And then I will uh, go over those and pick out the one that I want to use. In this case, I want to have one that has the greeting type. And then I will use the message or print out the message there. I will say the specific message of this greeting service. It's very, uh, this is a very simplistic example, but it shows how you can load services and use them. If we look at the chat implementation here, for instance, you can see that it has a type and it returns chat type. And then I have some message that I print out here. Did you hear about? So it's a, a chatty message. And I don't want to use this service because it has the wrong type. If we go into the greeting service, we see that we have a greeting type and it says, hello explorers. And now you might wonder how can the system know that these two are connected? Will it look for the extended version of this? Uh, and that seems a little bit strange, uh, but it doesn't really do that. And I, I think I have misspelled this. I think this says the greeting service, not the greeting service. So let's change that up here. Uh, and we, uh, let's see here, do the, the refactor. So it's the greeting service and it should be changed here as well. Yeah, no, it's not like that. It's actually a way that you have in your resources, you have a meta inf, uh, where all your meta information will be stored when you package this into a library. And then you have a services directory under there. And then you create a file that has the same name as your abstract class that you want to make into a service. And then in that file, you will tell it which implementations are available for this service. So here we see that I have a chat implementation and a greeting implementation. And if I run this program a little bit here, we will see that it says hello explorers. So it's a very simple program. And if you do this in the same program or the same package, the same library, it doesn't really make sense. You could all use these classes as they are, but if you have packaged this into multiple different libraries and you imp integrate with other libraries, then you can have something very powerful here. So let's look at one of these examples. So we have the create image here and it's the image IO. An image IO uses SPI to find all the readers and writers for images. So here we see that I will read a buffered image as a PNG and then I will write a buffered image as a TIFF. 
So I take in an image and write out another image. Before here I have something that prints out all the reader format names and all the writer format names. So let's run that program and see what the output gets. It does the conversion and we also see that we have readers for JPEG, TIFF, uh, bitmaps, GIFs uh, and wide bitmaps I guess and PNGs and then TIFF uh, and so on. So it actually has multiple different formats that you can use as writers and readers. And here it uses the interface to find all of these and these are packaged into your Java APK. And if you want, you can actually replace these or add more to them uh, by adding to a specific interface. So let's go over to the POM file here and add a 12 monkeys uh, version here. So we have an, something that adds PSD, this uh, Photoshop uh, file to, uh, so you can read that. So they have built a reader for this format. So if I run this and add it to it and I run my program again, we will see that the list of readers will have changed. So we actually have Photoshop here as well, the PSD file. So we can read those as well now. They haven't written any writers, but they have written readers. So if we go into external libraries over here, I'm not so sure if it actually shows, but if you go into the Maven project and the meta inf there, they have a service directory, and then they will uh, create a file called Java X image IO, you can see if I can copy this uh, name here. Now, uh, so it's called Java X image IO uh, SPI image reader SPI. So that file name they have created, and within this file, they have added uh, this line here. So they have some plugins for PSD that is a reader SPI that implements that interface that we have up here of that abstract class for the image reader SPI. So that's a way that you can take your Java APK and extend it with more functionality or replace functionality. And these 12 monkeys have actually replaced the JPEG library and the GIF library and also uh, the PNG library. So they have for all the different image uh, formats, they have created both readers and writers for most of them. Um, so you can actually read a lot more different types and perhaps have better readers that perhaps create more compressed format or is faster to work with these kind of image files and so on. So that's a very cool way to extend Java or to extend your library with more functionality and create a plugin structure so your customers can write something that could extend your application if you want. So this was what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you are using some SPI in your workday, leave a comment down below. If you didn't know that the image IO class used a SPI in, um, Please leave a comment about that as well. If you have any other questions or suggestions, I read all comments. And I really hope to see you in the next video.